Welcome to Collateral. Today's story concerns the commutation of Scooter Libby's jail sentence for perjury. Since the corporate media won't tell you exactly what happened, we'll do the honors. But first, a civil trial began last week in Birmingham, Alabama, in which it is alleged that Drummond Company paid paramilitaries to kill two union leaders in Colombia. Keep in mind that U.S. corporations like United Fruit Company, Chiquita, and Coca-Cola have a long history of conspiring with killers to off union opposition abroad. A Marine Corps memo circulated after the 2005 Haditha massacre was recently made public. It reads, quote, fighting terrorists associated with Al-Qaeda is stronger language than serving. The American people will side more with someone actively fighting a terrorist organization that is tied to 9-11 than with someone who is idly serving, like in a way one serves a casserole. A recent report updated the cost of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to $12 billion per month. $12 billion. Now imagine that money spent on things like public education, or health care, or public transit. Yeah, but who needs any of those things? For context, we have to go back to January 2007. At that time, Libby's lawyers were prepared to argue that he was just a small cog in a larger conspiracy to ruin the career of CIA operative Valerie Plame. Now, Plame, you will recall, is the wife of Joseph Wilson, the man who wrote an op-ed piece in the New York Times, which offered evidence that the Bush White House manipulated intelligence on Iraq. Libby's lawyers issued subpoenas for people like Karl Rove and White House counsel Dan Bartlett. Even Dick Cheney expected to testify. Did you want, I'm going to be a witness in that trial within a matter of weeks. I'm not going to discuss it. I haven't discussed it. This was a very big deal and could have gotten very ugly for the White House. But then, a funny thing happened. Nothing! Libby's defense team never called Cheney or Rove or Bartlett. Libby never testified in his own defense. All of a sudden, he went silent. And now, just as his jail sentence is about to begin, he has his jail sentence miraculously commuted. Now, we can't be sure why Libby decided against calling Cheney or Rove to the stand. But what does look clear is that Libby's silence was bought by the president. First, keep in mind the defense had a note in his possession written by Cheney that appeared to link the president directly to the conspiracy to out Valerie Plain. Both Bush and Cheney could have gone down for this. Second, remember that Bush did not pardon Libby. He only commuted his sentence. That's a big difference. If pardoned, Libby could not take the fifth in any future criminal or congressional proceeding. Libby could also have been deposed in the civil lawsuit filed by Plame and Joe Wilson. Thus, by commuting Libby's sentence and not pardoning him, Bush preserves his ability to remain silent. Libby's name will be linked in history with liars like Oliver North, who chose loyalty to their bosses over their duty to serve the public. And joining us now from Ahmadi, Iraq, is the host of War Stories, Colonel Oliver North. And if you like what we're doing here, please tell someone about it.